everybody. It's I'm Edward Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well today. I just started making this video and this kind of dawned on me as I went along with it. We've gone through almost eight months of the year already. That's pretty crazy if you think about it. Well, with us heading into September and we already did the September outlooks here. Let's go ahead and take a look at what our uh, fall outlook is looking like currently. This is going to be what I would say, I guess, the second to last outlook for fall before we get into the season itself. So expect some uh, wholesale changes here and also some things to make note of. With this one, looks can be deceiving because fall is kind of a transitional season. It's called a solstice instead of a, it's called an equinox instead of a solstice, excuse me. And the thing to make note of here is while we're looking at most of the country still expected to be above average. Some of this mainly comes into effect for most of September, maybe parts of October. November could still be above average as well, but I would expect some more cooler days to come here, especially with a lot of shifting beginning to occur with our oscillations here, which are a huge part of the weather pattern here. And then our current Enzo pattern, which, well, we already know that we're in a La Nina right now. And we're anticipated to stay in that. This is what our Enzo chart is looking like currently, and this is what the forecast is as we go into September, October, and November here. You can see that we're well above the threshold here, which is at negative 0.5 degrees Celsius here. So with that being said, most of the uh, models are in pretty good agreement here. Everything with the exception, everything with the exception being the statistical average. So. Obviously, the ocean waters are well cooler than average. Not to be unexpected, though. It's been a crazy year as far as the Enzo pattern is concerned. We started out the year with a strong El Nino, and then we have gone to the opposite end of the spectrum. In January, we were all the way up here, and now we've gone down here. Pretty big jump. Pretty uh, extreme change right there, if you will. But... As we go forward here, some typical things to look for when we're dealing with a fall La Nina pattern is usually we'll get a setup to where we get more cold air to start coming in later into the season, especially over towards the northeast. Northwest can get that too, and really more the northern states will tend to have a more active weather pattern. It's going to be a little bit more of a question mark towards the Midwest here and maybe even parts of the Ohio Valley, Southeast. It's going to be a battle zone line. And especially as we get towards winter, this will continue as well. So it's a little bit of a preview, if you will, there. Towards the south, we get we, we can get a mixed bag here. Towards the southwest, I do expect some warmer than average temperatures to remain. And it's even reflected in the fall outlook here. Towards Florida, we tend to be pretty warm still. Not much really to, not much really to be uh, alarmed about over here towards Florida right now. Still got wild cards in regards to precipitation, however, because we still we're still in hurricane season. An above average season is still expected, although things have been pretty slow, and they, well, based off of recent model trends, it looks like it's going to continue to be slow, which is a good thing. This year has been pretty scary in regards to the forecast here, but good news is things haven't really come to fruition yet. It's not over yet. But in any case, though, another thing to make note of as we get into the seasonal outlook for precipitation is, whereas before we were seeing a lot more activity towards the east, it is going to continue, but I do expect a bit of a downtrend, especially towards the south as we go forward here. You can start to see this area of below average pre uh, precipitation over here towards the southwest, and it's spreading its way east. I expect that trend to continue as we go forward here we're starting to see the northwest get into the action here in regards to the fall outlook as far as above average precip is concerned which is great news especially considering the fact that there have been a lot of wildfires over here in recent time so this will be some good relief for these areas the, the main thing we're hoping for is to not get this all at once because that can cause a whole new array of problems there so we continue to move on with our outlook here we're going to even take a little look at alaska so over towards the western part of the state we're expecting above average chances to precip here below average chances towards the southeastern parts of the state here so 
I think we'll kind of be dealing with a little bit of a flip-flop pattern here. I do think as time goes on, we may shift a little bit. There also are other factors that come into play, such as oscillations, which we'll talk about here. And if we look at the oscillations in regards to the month of September 1st, we can see that we actually look like we're in what's called a negative AO. So this is the Arctic oscillation we're looking at. This is towards the North Pole where we're looking. Usually when you see higher pressure here, or the areas in the red here, we will often have more uh, cold blast to deal with here over the lower 48, especially if that ends up being the case over towards this other oscillation here, which is called the North Atlantic oscillation. Right during, so right now during the month of September as things stand currently, I'm not really seeing anything significant. Of course, this is over a 30 day average and things can easily change. I honestly said in my outlook earlier this week that September could be a month where we kind of flip flop around a little bit. I don't expect any significant cold shots, but when we get to October, however, look at this little feature right here. I do think that this could come into play in regards to our our month of October here. I cannot speak today. But I'm mainly thinking, of course, this is going to impact more of the northern states, maybe going to be more so towards the northwest. So in October, you might want to be paying attention over here. We could even get some earlier snow as a result of this. Like I said, still questionable at this time. I do see an area over here that kind of catches my eye here as time goes on so we go towards november we start to see a negative pattern take place again over towards both the arctic oscillation and then also towards the north atlantic oscillation so expecting some cooler than average temperatures towards the northeast as we get towards november not too far out of pocket in fact that's usually expected but another question i have here is this area right here I always watch this for stratospheric heating. Stratospheric heating also can come into play for stuff like polar vortexes. So November in particular kind of catches my eye. <clears throat> so with that being said, I think as we get towards October and November, things, while I would want to say they get more spicy with the weather pattern, it may get more frigid. I know it's a bad joke. I tried. But in any case, though, this also is going to be interesting in regards to our severe weather season that we have towards fall. A lot of people forget that fall is a secondary season for severe weather. It's a lot like spring, actually. We're going through a transitional period where we're dealing with these warm and cold air masses colliding with each other. So during any point in time within the next three months, I do think that we'll have maybe a couple of severe weather setups, some of which could be notable. But we'll have to see how things pan out from there. Obviously, we're well out of range of any any operational model that would give us a much better look. So we're just working with what we got at this point. So we'll show how this ultimately looks in regards to our temperatures. And this is, of course, on a month to month basis. It's not what every day is going to look like. Of course, we're a little bit warm over towards the northwest right now. Towards the deep south and the southern plains in particular, we're still dealing with the well above average temperatures, but the departure from, at, from uh, above average here, it's not that significant. We can still see areas that get up to 10, 20 degrees above average over towards these uh, darker shades of orange here and even getting into the reds here, but we may be about 5, maybe even 10 degrees above average in the areas in the yellow, yellowish orange, and even, I guess you would say tangerine color. As time goes on, as we get towards... October, you see the you see the, the uh, above average temperatures linger. In fact, they start to spread a little bit even towards the east. And as we get towards November, we even start to see, I wouldn't call it a heat dome. Based off the look of this, it looks like it's definitely going to be above average over here towards the central part of the U.S. as well. Deep south kind of gets into the action. Like I said before, this is pretty typical of a La Nina pattern where we see those above average temperatures, especially over towards the south a bit more. It's interesting to note that even though I would expect a few cold blasts here and there, even towards the northeast right now, it looks like we're gonna be above average by about five or 10 degrees. The thing with these cold shots is that they don't linger. So with that being said, 
should be relatively balmy. I'm pretty sure some of you guys in the Northeast are happy about that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look now at the precipitation here. And the thing we're going to be noticing in particular is we're going to see a little bit more activity towards the north. Right now, it still looks pretty dry as we get through the month of September here. Towards Florida, it's still busy. And everywhere else, it's kind of in between. But watch what happens as we go into the next month. You can see that north e northwest is getting busy. Starting to see the uh, northern plains here. Maybe even the Great Lakes starting to get to the action. And it's going to be getting progressively drier towards the south. This is what we look like as we get into November. This is when we start to shift from that <clears throat> that fall setup into the winter setup a bit more. And with that, this is what you would expect if you know anything about La Nina patterns for the southeast. It gets a bit more dry. Florida still looks rather busy, but a little bit closer to average in regards to precip. Great Lakes are getting into the action, and eventually... I do expect the northeast to shift into a little bit more active of a pattern, especially as we get towards December. We'll start to see those above average uh, those above average precipitation anomalies there. But in any case, though, this is all the time I got for this video. Thanks for tuning in. If you didn't already, make sure you hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care and have an awesome rest of your day.